Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra. Uh, the subject of today, we're going to talk about coronavirus part two. We're going to start having a very special meditation, and this meditation is going to be a uh, death and rebirth meditation. Now, I understand there's, there's a lot of uh, confusion right now. There's a lot of fear, anxiety. A lot of people are very concerned about their safety uh, regarding this uh, so-called epidemic at the moment. So I want to put some light on it. And um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get deeper into it, and I'll make some uh uh, will clear some things, so you would not have to worry about it. Um, first thing is regarding life and death and rebirth. We're going to do this meditation, and let's see who is going to die. And let's say something is going to really happen and you're in a situation, really life-threatening situation, and let's examine in our meditation to see who is the one who is going to die if something like that happens. So what I would like you to do is, um, first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna bring your attention inwards, and instead of putting your attention on the other other world or your thoughts or your emotions you're going to bring your attention towards this place within yourself before thoughts arise what's there before you're thinking so just relax and close your eyes and bring your attention in this place so this is like a journey within, you're traveling within yourself. Your attention turns inwards. And as you are traveling within yourself, I want you, I want you to visualize, first of all, you're going inwards Tracing your thoughts to this place before the thoughts come. Tracing your emotions to this place before you have one. It's not a visualization. It's not a mental process. This is simply switching your attention and putting your attention on this place to see what's there. And as you do this, now I would like you to see, visualize yourself. You're in an elevator and this elevator is going down into this dark tunnel. You're, you're in an elevator, the elevator starts going down into the dark tunnel and it's going level by level by level. It's going deeper and deeper and deeper into this dark place. It's very, very dark. And it's going deeper and deeper. I want you to just stay present with it. I want you to go deep into this place. And I want you to see that this is 
coming to the last day of your life. Today is the last day of your life. I want you to drop your resistance and keep traveling into this darkness. You don't have a choice. You can't get out of it. It's already predetermined. And today, this moment is your last few moments in this life. There's no way to go, nowhere to escape. Nobody can re rescue you. And this is it. You have to leave behind everything you've done. You don't have an option to go back and say goodbye to anybody. You can't go back and do the things you wanted to do. You can't go back and give something to someone that you forgot to do it. You can't go back and say goodbye to your pets, best friends, smell flowers, or anything. It's over. You are in this elevator and it's going deep into the darkness. I want you to just surrender to your faith and keep going deeper. And if fear and anxiety ar arises, I want you to just stay with it. Now we're going deeper and it's coming to the final moments of your life. In the next few moments, your life as you know it is going to end. This is the final moments of your life. However, you have an option. You can go into the fear, panic, anxiety, resistance, or you can stay present with it. and stay in awareness, complete awareness, completely aware, watching, observing the final moments of this life and observing how this transition is going to take, what's going to happen Are you going to be no more? Or there's going to be something else. Nobody knows. You're about to discover that. If you're not going to be anymore, then who cares? Because you're not going to be thinking about it anymore. So you're vanished for good. There is no memory of it. If you're going to transition to something else, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Surely it's worth investigating. Where does your spirit where does your consciousness go to? I want you to see that breathing is getting heavier. I want you to be completely surrender. Death is here. And you are, in the next few moments, 
to die. Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready or get ready to take the leap to the other side? And a part of that is your body will die, means you have to take your clothes off, your jacket, this old jacket you're wearing, you're gonna take this off, get rid of your boots, your underclothes, your jewelry, everything is gonna be peeled off of you. And you're gonna be light and not having any weight on you anymore because you don't have to carry the body. Now you're at the gate at the very gate of death, this is it. In the next few seconds, the door will open up and you have to walk through it. Your breath is getting heavy. Your body is getting very, very heavy. Feels very old, decaying doesn't have any energy to carry on. It's an old, old engine. It's been working for a long time. It doesn't have any more juice left in it. It's ready to give up. Whether it's old age, or it's disease, or it's coronavirus, whatever it is, it's time for you to go, whether you like it or you don't like it. But you're in this very, very crossroad to the other side. We don't know what's there, but we will find out. I want you to be present and brave and stand behind the door waiting for this door to open up. This is the final moment of your life. This is what you've heard all of your life about. You heard of other people going You've read books about it. You imagine about it. You have entertained many different fears and worries about this all of your life with people around you being really afraid of this moment. And no one has ever been able to escape it. That's the final moment and in the next few moments you're about to cross over, the door will open up and you walk through it. Get ready. Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. And take another deep breath. You're in this very dark, dark place at the end of the line. You're about to pop out of your body and walk through this door, this gate, You're waiting for your turn. And take another deep breath. Now the gate opens up. 
these ancient gates open up uh, what do you see oh my god so much light golden light uh, is pouring out you leave your body back and you feel really really light and you walk through you take a step and you walk through and you see pure golden light pouring in and you take a deep breath and this air is fresh unlike any other air you've ever breathed in your life there's a quality in this air that's beyond your imagination as if you're in Himalaya, as if you're in the high mountains in Norway and Sweden, as if you're on top of Mount Shasta. Take a deep breath and you walk in and you are coming to this light. It's pure golden light with love and acceptance a lot of cheering happening around you and a lot of familiar faces you see of your friends family everybody is cheering for you congratulating you to enter into this realm You feel an enormous amount of love and acceptance, joy. It's unbelievable how it feels. Take a deep, deep breath. You have opened up your wings and for the first time in your life, first time in your memory, first time in your experience, you feel, you feel lighter than ever before. Like an angel, you have opened up your golden wings and you're flying towards the light, a lot of support, a lot of love, a lot of cheering. You're getting more energized by the moment. Every second you feel more power, more energy. You are in the bosoms of the maker. You are flying in this golden light of the maker you are meeting your maker her majesty the supreme soul the supreme creator of all life and you are melting into this light You're disappearing in the light. You are now the light. You have lost, lost all boundaries of any kind of imagination of any sort of body, light body, etheric body. You are now particles of light. And you have dissolved into the love of the maker and you're emerging into the ocean of the one the oneness a drop of water entering into the ocean and you're dissolving and becoming the ocean itself 
the presence that which is always here that which is the source of everything the source of every object every thought every emotion every movement every imagination all creation you are now that Take a deep breath. And see the light, the power, the shine of this golden light. It's blinding the eyes. It's so powerful, so strong, so loving. Now you can see that you have, you are born again, rebirthed into the light of the divine presence of her majesty the supreme soul you are back home here into the light Now you can see that every play, everything that happened in that life was all exactly designed to be in that way. Your entire life was a script that you had to play and go through it. All those fears and worries and anxiety were meaningless. They were a part of the play. But now you can see for yourself that there was nothing to be afraid of. It was all happening in an imagination. It was yourself imagining the limitations, the game, the play called life. You are pure, pure light. Nothing can happen to you because you are the source of everything. Only in your imagination you were imagining that you are limited. You were imagining that you could die. You were imagining that there was a virus could kill you. You were imagining that maybe your life can end. But now you can see all of it was an imagination. It was the light acting, pretending to be the dark. The dark was coming from the light. All of it was a play. All of it is a play. And you are here. And you will 
will always be here regardless of your form. Formless comes to form and form dissolves into formless. You've been playing this game ever since the ever since. And it will continue. Now I would like you, in your imagination, to reincarnate in this body that is sitting right now pretending to do a meditation, pretending to be a spiritual seeker, pretending to be concerned about this and that, pretending to be separated from the maker. It's okay, it's a game we're playing. But now you can't really pretend that because you know who you are. You got a very, very good taste of it. When you come back here in this place, when your awareness comes back away from the noise, you come to this place, to this present moment. As your attention comes back to here and you trace it back and you go back to your thoughts, the source of your thoughts before your thoughts come. And if you are really attentive, it's impossible not to encounter yourself. It's impossible not to recognize the truth of who you are. which is pure silence, which is the presence here. And we're not talking, I'm not talking about some esoteric concept outside of here, something in another planet, it's in or in another star system or in another time. I'm not talking about another civilization. I'm not talking about a concept. I'm talking about the truth of who we are, who we are right now in this moment. And when your attention comes inwards and you go to your center, you experience this directly. It's a direct experience. That's why I call it 5D quantum awareness the direct experience. And I designed a workshop for this. That's why I designed a workshop called Return to Love. Because you're returning into the very source of who you are. Return into the source of who you are. And there's Im immediately, immediately, instantly an encounter with your timeless eternal self with the truth of who you are and i'm going to explain that again one more time these are not words okay oh i am one with everything and we're eternal but i'm shed scared from coronavirus Oh, I've taken this course here and that course there. Oh yeah, I know, da, 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 da. But I'm really frightened. If you know who you are, the truth of who you are, then you know that you are, it's impossible anything happened to you. So let's talk about, let me check my, um, one moment, I'm going to check, check the messages that I have.
here from on our chat box. And I want to know if I can. Okay, I'll check them out later. So let me get into this thing really deep. This coronavirus thing, which is really big right now, and it's creating a lot of disturbance. A, in the past, I've spoken about this many, many times with my students who've been with me for a few years. And I've repeatedly many times have told you and shared with you that avoid the news. Forget about the news. The news is designed to create fear and anxiety and to make you to create this stuff inside you that you feel like their life is going to end and you're going to die and, and it makes you really small and insignificant and becoming submissive to the authority, the authority, whatever, the specialist, whomever they are, of exaggerating something so big that you're all going to die. Well, let me tell you, let me give you the news. You will die. Your body is going to die. But when are you going to die is the question. If you think you're going to live for another thousand years in this physical body, you're, you're wrong. So let's, let's clear this. You are going to die. That's, thank God. Otherwise, you don't want to stay in this body for another 200 years. Anyone who's got a little bit older understands how difficult it is to be in a body which is not functioning very well. So, thank God, the body will die and we move on. That's A. B. What are the chances that you die from corona disease, coronavirus, versus car accident. I want you to go on online and research. How many people in your country die from car accidents? How many people in your country die from malpractice by physicians in hospitals that they made mistakes, they gave you the wrong medication, they operated wrongly, they kill people in hospitals. They kill him by giving him wrong medication. This is continuous. Continuously this happened. I want you to go do some research. How many people die from cancer? How many people die from heart attack? And if you go and research these, these uh, statistics, you will see for yourself that the number that people die from these things is far beyond coronavirus, far beyond coronavirus. Now, why aren't you worried every time you go sit in a car and start driving a car, especially today with drivers being on their phone, paying, not paying attention to driving, trying to send a text message or being drunk or intoxicated on prescription medication or alcohol or some kind of um, conventional uh, whatever uh, pleasure drug. And, and the moment they're not paying attention and they crash into your car and they kill you. Why aren't you worried about that? Because the percentage of the people who die from these kind of accidents are way more way higher than corona disease. If you're worried about dying, then you should be freaked out every time you're getting in a car and you're driving. And you should be really freaked out about getting cancer. And you should be really freaked out about heart attack because those rates are way, way higher than the coronavirus. So, this is something the media has 
exaggerated and created. It may get worse. I don't know. I'm not claiming that I know what's going to happen in the future. But if it's on the media so much, I would question it. Who's going to benefit from creating a massive panic across the world? I wouldn't just sit there and listening to what I get from all these different radio or TV stations. Who's going to benefit out of it? What's behind it? What sort of agenda is there? Where do they want to take me? Are they going to create a situation that people have to volunteer to get um, vaccinated? Are we going to get chipped? Are we going to give away our freedom because of this? What's the agenda? What is it they want to get out of it that they've created this thing and they created such a huge fear of it? What's there? What's behind it? I just won't buy these news the way they are. And you think for yourself, you're a conscious being, you're educated. Don't just sit at home and be afraid. Investigate it. Look into it. See what's behind this. Is it true? And what is it going to do to me? Yeah, you're intelligent. Use your intelligence. Don't just submit to something so easily and be paralyzed by it. All of your spiritual practice and training, all the workshops you've done, all the books you've read, all this stuff that you have done, whether you're practicing shamanism or you're a healer or you're a channeler or you've gone to all these different workshops because I know most of you have been working on yourself. And all of this work you've done about expanding your consciousness and recognitions of the truth of who you are Right now, it's being tested. This is the moment you, you have to demonstrate where you're at with your spirituality. Are you beyond? Have you arisen above your body and your mind, your emotions? Have you conquered fear? Do you recognize your eternal? Do you recognize that you cannot vanish? You cannot die? Maybe your body can. If you have, then this is the time to demonstrate it. This is the moment to prove to your higher self, to, your, to the soul, to your guru, to the creator, that you have accomplished inner silence and you have found inner peace in the face of a catastrophe or epidemic or whatever is the story is, that you can graduate and go to the next level of consciousness. This is the moment to exercise that. And yes, in the same time, we use our intelligence. We're intelligent beings. We don't take unnecessary risk. We don't do stupid things. We're careful. I understand that. No one says, be reckless. But this is a moment that meditation and your training comes very handy. If you've been at any of my training programs, if you've been at any of my workshops, if you've been in Sweden doing the 5D quantum healing training program, if you've been in Sedona, if we have done workshops together, then I've given you the tools to quiet your mind and to dive back into your silence. And we have talked about not 
getting identified with the noise. There's a lot of noise out there. And it may get worse. If you remember last year, those of you who've been with me, I shared it with you. I said things, the noise, other noise, outside noise can get worse. It can be a lot more noisy. And right now it's very noisy. Practice your meditation. Practice silence. Stay center in your center. Bring your attention inwards and stay in your center. No matter what is happening, all these noise. I have people coming, my family, my friends, some of them. Oh, Zaratustra, don't go to Europe. You can't go there. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get stuck if you go to Europe and you're going to die. I go, dude, I may die at any moment. Who knows they're going to live for a long time? What makes you think you're going to live tomorrow? What gives you this ignorant idea that you can you are going to be around tomorrow what makes you think that corona or anything else don't you see people die around you young death can come at any moment to anyone at any time and if i'm to live my life and worried about I may die. I don't want to live that, that life. I've had five near death experiences. I know what it's like when death comes and knocks on your door. Death is welcome to come and knock on my door at any moment because I'm not afraid of it. Because where would I go? What can happen to me? All of it is a part of myself. Corona disease is an aspect my, of my consciousness. The, the wars, diseases, the problems in the world, they're all aspects of myself. Everything is an aspect of myself. I'm not separated from any of it. There is no separation. Cancer is a part of myself. Birth is a part of myself. Success is a part of myself. Failure is a part of myself. The enemy, the communist, the, the Nazis, the Illuminati, the, the bad, the evil corporations, they are an aspect of myself. They're not separated from me. I am one with them and they are one with me. It's all part of the same one, different expressions of the absolute, different faces of God, different acts of God. It's all the same one. It's like your left hand is really afraid of your right hand. Your right hand is going to invade your left hand. These are all same. Now, this is the time for us to really stay in our center, connecting to the center of ourselves and be the Buddha. And that's very important for us to get together at this time. Us coming together and sit with each other and be reminded to come back into this place. This is not a time to be isolated and be frightened. This is a time that we come to satsang. We come together and we go back into our silence. And as you divert your attention back inwards and you come back to this place, your mind becomes quiet and bliss, the presence, her majesty reappears. It shows herself to you. 
and you come back into the truth of who you are, and you remember that you are love and you are God. You remember that. And all fears and worries and anxieties disappear. They vanish. This is the moment for us to demonstrate this practically. And we don't want to lose this opportunity. This is a great opportunity for us. Now we can fall into the fear, like what has happened in the past, and be an individual afraid and, and insignificant. Or we can come to our the truth of who we are, and we be majestic and great. And your presence, by staying in your own center, the vibration that you create will transform Everything's in your surrounding. Your choice is yours. And if you fail, it's okay. You come back next life and you get another chance. Yeah, people tell me, are you, how, what are you doing? Are you going to go to Europe? Yeah, I am coming to Europe unless there are no flights, unless they cancel my flight, unless you tell me I can't enter in Norway. But I'm not worried about getting corona disease in the airplane or at my workshops or anywhere because I know the time I was born was set and the time that I'm going to die is set. These are set. It's already written. There's nothing anybody can do about my, my time of departure. It's already written. It's all taken care of. So if it's going to be next week or next 10 days, so be it. Let it be. Because I know I'm in good hands. I know you're in good hands. I know the truth. The truth of life is that all of this games and plays and ups and downs are all being done by one thing. The Supreme Soul, Supreme Spirit is playing this game, is acting as if there is another, is acting the duality, is pretending that there is something such as separation. This is all God itself. God is the only thing that exists. God is the only thing that has ever existed. There is nothing outside of God. Nothing. All these other stories you hear, it's hoax. It's imagination. You are God. You are a part of the entire oneness. Every decision you make is a part of the entire oneness. This whole idea you have free will to do this and to do that, it's, it's an imagination. You're imagining that you have these choices. This is God choosing through you. This is God choosing through everybody else. This is God's show. God is pretending to be me, pretending to be you, pretending to be coronavirus, pretending to be Donald Trump. This is all God. You can't get fooled by it. You have to look deeper inside to see the truth. There is no separation. There is no someone else, my dear. It doesn't exist. It looks like it. It tastes like it. It smells like it. 
it appears to be duality. But that duality is coming from the oneness. God is playing both sides, the light and the dark. In this quest for light, we're fighting against the dark. It's all itself. It's all itself. Look through it and you will see it for yourself. Switch your glasses. Take these glasses that you're separate. You're a little, little itty bitty individual and you're helpless. Take those glasses out and put your other glasses on and you will see it for yourself. You will see God is behind everything. Everything. Because nothing can exist outside of God. Nothing. No virus, no disease, no circumstances, no enemy army. Nothing can exist be outside of God. God is the only thing there is. Make that your mantra and look at everything that way. And your vision changes. And when, but while you're doing this, what you want to do on a regular basis, especially now through this thing is happening, you know, all this chaotic stuff, this is the moment that more than ever, you want to dive into your spirituality. You want to be with your guru. You want to be with your teachers. You want to be with those who are in light. You want to be with the wise ones because everybody else is panicking and freaking out. And you want to be with that message that text turns you back inwards to your own center. This is that moment. So we bring our attention inwards and we dive into that which is before any thoughts come, before these anxiety come, go back into the place, go back to the source of it. And every time you go back into your own source, you will see it's quiet. Nothing is happening. You come back to silence. You will be amazed in the midst of all of this chaos, how blissed out you're going to get. Completely blissed out. Completely in union with divine presence. And you will see for yourself that all is well. Nothing is wrong. There's nothing wrong. It's all exactly the way it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be this way. Ignore the noise. Don't pay any attention to the noise. Come back to the truth of who you are. Keep your attention on the truth of who you are. Know that you're divine being. Know that you're timeless. Know that nothing can destroy you. Your body, yes, it will die. But not your consciousness, not I am, not your presence, not the, the sense of being. That sense you have that you are is going to remain the same forever. The rest is a show. It's not real. None of it is real. It's a show. The entire thing you're looking at as the world is just a show. It's an animation. It doesn't exist. It's non-existing. It doesn't exist because, and I'm telling you, the proof is in the pudding. It doesn't exist because it doesn't stay the same. It's constantly changing from one thing to another thing. It has no solidity. It does not remain the same. 
it changes all the time. It's not real. What is real is that which remains the same all the time. It's always the same. And that's I am. That's the presence. That's the watcher. The one who's aware is always aware. The awareness remains the awareness. Everything else appears and disappears. Excuse me for one moment. I need to set my um, Instagram ended and I'm just going to replay it again. Okay. Just one moment. I need to fix something here. Okay, this thing is. Okay, so <clears throat> let's answer some questions. Um, Hi, Yana. <laughs> Hi, Zaratustra. Thank you so much. It was divine and magical. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's actually like you, you just set it on time because like me and my children will go to Bali in, uh, in, in May. So I was yesterday, so I was so freaked out and I didn't know. And I'm going through Taos, Korea. So I was wondering, like, what should I do? What should I do? Should I just return to it or cancel the trip? And, you know, I'm just going to wait. Okay. Right. Yeah. Just, <clears throat> of course, we, <clears throat> we want to be intelligent. We want to be aware. We don't want to be asleep, but we don't want to fall into the fear. And yes, there is a virus or whatever the story is whether it's man-made and they've created it and they're testing it and they're creating things or it's something that evolved on its own. And it's hard for me to believe that, but whatever is the story. And yes, if you contract it, there's a possibility of dying. Excuse me, I just dropped my phone. And there is a possibility that something happens. So returning to that question, what I asked before the, the meeting, like, because everybody is like, uh, when you sign, right, and you balance and everything like is fine, but you go into society and they say your friends, like people whom you know, you know, and they all like, oh my God, what is going on? This and that. And they expect something from you, like say something, like something, right? And it's hard to explain people about like 5d consciousness about this divine power and energy and i try to find the right words you know for those people who in who is in all this frustration and what you can suggest what you can recommend right. well you, it depends on the level of consciousness of a person like, for example, uh, I've learned that I need for, let's say, someone in my family, uh, they're very close to me, or friends, and they don't believe I have a connection with them, but let's say family, you're connected to them, and uh, you can't deny them, you can't just walk away because they're not conscious or they don't know anything about what we're talking about. So they're ruled by their emotions and their thoughts, and they're ruled by the fears and everything, correct? And we're talking about someone from the mainstream. Is that, is that what you're referring to? Yes, we're talking about the family members, people whom you know, but also the people whom we don't know. Right, well, yeah. So yeah. I, look at them, just imagine that you are talking to children. If you're talking to your seven, eight year old, I don't know how old are your kids, but eight. eight. You, don't, you don't use this language you're using 
with, with us here, you use a different language with them. And if you want to reach out to them, you have to find a point of interest for them so they can hold their attention and you communicate with them according to their consciousness, their awareness. So it depends how mature they are, you deal with them based on that. And if you start to explain something to your kids like this and they don't understand, you don't get frustrated with them because you know they're kids. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So same thing is with these people. If they don't have that level of awareness or consciousness, then you, wanna, you want to imagine you're talking to children. Uh, not as far as not getting frustrated with them that they don't understand what you're saying. So it doesn't matter how old they are, you want to imagine that you're talking to kids in the level of consciousness and awareness in this level. So their awareness still has not caught up with their physical age. So you talk to them like that. You, to whatever extent they can understand. And sometimes they don't understand the words. So it's frustrating, or if you're trying to explain things to them, they may think you're trying to teach them things and they may not like it. So a lot of times I speak of my own experience with my family. They're not interested in hearing anything like this. So all I do is I'm just available there. I don't say anything. I'm just available, I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm in my center. They don't know why they feel good when I'm around. They want me to be around them most of the time because what I do is I bring calmness. I bring peace to the house. And that's how I'm transmuting this awareness to them because this is as much as they can get. Thank Does you. Very any, does this make any sense to you? Very useful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Just be be present and be available. Sometimes they're going through like right now. Maybe they're worried about this and that. And oh my God, da 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 da. Let's buy masks. Let's do this. Da 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 da. And I'm just there. I'm just loving. I don't say anything. And. Uh, that has an impact for them or maybe they go through their issues and they're suffering from some drama and they're telling me their drama and i can easily help them to overcome it but they're not open to me so i just listen i say yes i understand i understand i get it i understand but one question uh, one question when when it comes to like something let's say it's a per, uh, other person have like too much like trauma mm -hmm. and pain inside and and like i'm very sensitive person so i i'm like at some point like i start to feel the same so how um be uh understanding to to other person but not take his pain to yourself i mean not leave it right well it's like anything in life you you're available you're there but you're not connected, you disconnect from the drama. So you come back into your presence, you come, your attention comes back, instead of going to their drama and their story, you come back to the center of yourself. And when, when you do this on a regular basis, you're at peace and calmness and nothing can touch you. Because what can touch my inner peace? If I've discovered inner peace, what can touch it? I'm the only person who can disturb it. The news from the outside cannot touch that because it's not penetrable. So you bring your attention inside yourself. You bring your attention to your inner silence. Then you're at peace. Now, everything has limits. 
yeah, sometimes, you know, you're somewhere and it's very crazy, very um, chaotic. So you just simply leave. You don't have to be in a toxic environment all the time. If you can leave, you leave. But while you're there, you stay in your own center. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you're it. Welcome. You're Thank welcome. You. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Anybody has any questions for me? Hi, Uti. Hi, Salatos Kirsten. Nice to see you. Nice my to meet you. Thank you. My question is about um, the state when we left the body. Um, when, we, um, when we are melting with that big light, that supreme soul, is there any individuality left? Have we a consciousness? about our soul then? Have you understand? But, yeah. Is, is there any individuality left when you merge into the one yes. oneness? Yes. Right. Yes, yes. So if I have a mm -hmm. glass of water and mm -hmm. I pour this water into the ocean, what mm -hmm. happens to the water? Then I would say there's no individuality left. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it dissolves into the ocean and it becomes the ocean. But you have to understand one thing. This is ocean here. And what it seems to be individuality is the characteristics of the ocean in it. What seems to be individuality is an expression of the absolute. God wants to pretend it's you. It wants to play this game with itself, that it's you. And then it wants to pretend that it's me. And of course, I have certain character characteristics and you have certain characteristics. It's all expressions of the same one. There's only one of us here, and that one likes to play these different characters. So when it comes to final moments that you dissolve back, whether you in, get enlightened and your consciousness emerges into God consciousness, yes, there's the appearance of the person. Anyone that has come to a state of enlightenment, they still have their body, they still have their character, and they do what they were doing before, maybe, or whatever. But their consciousness has merged into the oneness. Now, when you die and you go to the other side, you, the water is poured back into the ocean. So... But when you're born, it is the ocean water that they poured it into the glass. So it was always that thing. It was never separated from that thing. Okay? Yes, thank you. Can I, can I ask one thing more about that? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, when you reincarnate, then you have maybe a consciousness um, that um, is remembering the past lives. Yeah, but whose past lives? You don't know when you're you're going back into the ocean of consciousness, mm -hmm. and then when they're they're making you and they they stick the the glass yes. in the water and they pick it up. Yes. You don't know whose whose memories you're getting filled up with. But when you incarnate to a body and you have a sense that you're separated, you have a sense that you are incarnated and all the memories you have, you think they're yours. Mm -hmm. It appears to be you are someone separated, uh, my dear sister. It's an appearance. It looks like it. It's part of the game. Part of the game is that you think and feel 
that you are a separated individual. That's exactly designed by God. God itself wants you to think and feel that way. Otherwise, you know the truth and you won't play the game. So this is like you and I and two other kids, we're going to play a game of cards. It's a monopoly or something. It's a game we're playing together. While you're playing the game, we know we're playing the game. We can walk out of the game at any moment. But when we're playing it, we, we identify with the characters of this game only during the game. And this is what's happening right now here. When you recognize, realize who you are, you know you've been playing this game. And the game is ha harmless. It doesn't harm anybody because you're playing it with yourself. When you were kids, did you play like cowboy Indians or did you play nurse and patient or whatever? Did you play any games when you were a kid with your toys? Yeah. So you're in your bedroom by yourself. You're playing, playing these things. Aren't you both characters or four different characters? Don't you become these different characters? No. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? And you may be playing the game for two, three hours. And after two, three hours, you're just lost into the game. Your mom comes and knock on the door and says, honey, dinner is ready. Go wash your hands and come to dinner. And then, and then you leave the game, you go wash your hands and you go have, have dinner. And you leave the characters there and you become you again. What happened to those characters? Where do they go? They were happening in your imagination. You were imagining those four characters. They don't go all four of them with you to dinner. You leave them there and you come and have your dinner with your mom. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you go back and continue that game or maybe you go back and do your homework and go to bed early. And a day, next day or two days after you go back to that game. And this is what's happening here right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Start looking at life from this angle. Start looking at it this way. And you will see the truth beyond everything. You begin to see there is no other. There is no other one. There is no enemy. There is no virus. There is nothing to come and threaten you because that thing is an aspect of yourself. It's God playing this game with itself. It's been playing this game for thousands of years. But every time you sleep and you don't dream, the game is not there anymore. When you sleep and you're not dreaming, this whole creation disappears. It's not there. And then when you wake up and the first thought comes in your mind, I, I am, I am someone, I am Zarathustra, I am separated, then everything reappears. The game comes back. The Lila, they call it. Okay. So we have come to the end of our academy. I want to thank you all for being here. In 10 days, I will be heading to Hamar, Norway, and I have three events there. And I'm going to have uh, a very powerful workshop called From Suffering to Super Consciousness. And, uh, this is a very good time. If you're struggling and you have worries or any kind of 
emotional ups and downs with all this news. So this is a good time to come and join me and join us so we can come back into the center, to center of ourselves. Papaji, my sad guru, always said, seek the company of wives. Make sure you spend your time with wise people, with those who live in light, because majority of people on the planet, they're in the darkness. And they're involved and identified with fear and worry and anxiety. So bring your attention to your center. Identify with the truth of who you are, which is beyond the thoughts and emotions. So we're going to have this powerful workshop. There's two other events that I'm having, and you can look into my schedule. Zaratustra.tv um, is my website. You can go to the event calendar and check it out. After uh, Norway, I go to Germany, to Frankfurt, and I have three other workshops and events there. Um, I keep going to different countries, you know, as long as I can fly and I'm uh, allowed to get into that country, the, we, I will continue doing my tour. Um, I will, decided that I'm going to do my best to have the academy sessions as much as I can so uh, we can keep connected and we can transmit the truth of who we are and share the wisdom with everybody. So I'm going to do my best to keep the academy going. Um, I'm having two online courses next week being offered on my website. One is to how to feel, touch, and restore the auric field. I made an online course. And uh, the first course of 5D quantum awareness training, I've made 11 courses. The first one is going to be released next week. So I wanted you to know that. And also for the first time, we have released our meditation CD uh, that I made with Baram G. In addition to that, we still have uh, space in Ore, Sweden. That's going to be at the end of June, beginning of July of 2020. Uh, where I'm offering the entire 5D quantum healing and awareness training program in Ore, Sweden. Um, if you have a desire to be in this unified field and work on yourself, I highly recommend that you join me at one of these events. Uh, feel free to contact me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv or come on my website or reach out throughout uh, our Facebook pages. Thank you very much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you. Stay in your center, bring your attention inwards and know that all is well and there's nothing to fear. Our maker, the creator, takes care of the creation. God bless you all.